Hello, today I wanted to talk about two books I've read this week. Wool by Hugh Howey and The Lord of the Flies by William Golding. So I've been reading a lot of the Wheel of Time series recently by Robert Jordan, but I fancied a break this week. So I grabbed Wool because I've wanted to read it for a while, and then I read Lord of the Flies because I've never read it before and it seemed like quite a slim volume. So I wanted to talk very briefly about both of those and give them a bit of a review. Wool by Hugh Howey is a dystopian sci-fi novel set in an underground bunker. The plot for this book is really good. There's lots of twists and turns, so I didn't want to give anything away. But instead I talk about the theme of the book and the general setting rather than the plot. Briefly, the book follows several characters as they live their lives in this underground silo or bunker. The bunker is split into 130 levels. There isn't a lift, there's only a central stairway which people have to traverse if they want to get from the top to the bottom. Because of this, people tend to stay in their general area. People at the bottom stay at the bottom, people at the top stay at the top. Although the bunker is underground, at the very top level there are giant screens which show the outside. People don't know for certain what's out there, it looks like an apocalyptic wasteland. The air is toxic so people can't go outside. The penalty for very serious crimes is to become a cleaner. To go outside and clean the cameras, which provide the only knowledge of what's outside the bunker. Unfortunately, the air is so toxic that when you go outside, even if you're wearing a hazard suit, you'll die. However, the people of the silo tend to release their tension once there's been a cleaning. Because they can see outside again, there's a degree of freedom they didn't have before. So people celebrate and they have parties, and it's kind of grim because it all comes from a sacrifice. So the plot follows several characters, including the sheriff of the silo and the mayor. I really like the characterisation in these books. The characters are very well written. A book like this tends to focus on the plot and the theme and the setting, and not so much the characters, which is why I think you can get away with changing the reader's perspective so easily, because you're showing different parts of this world. That being said, the characters are actually all very well written and very different. Something I actually got from this book was a kind of feeling of claustrophobia. Like, there's nowhere to go in this silo. You can go up and down, but then they end. It's a very small world. Perhaps that's why the view of the outside is so important to people, because they need to know that there's more to life than just the silo. Hugh Howey, the author, actually conveys quite a lot of emotion throughout the book. There's one bit which is actually pretty scary, and I'll put it right at the end of the video because it is a bit of a spoiler. So hang on till the end, and I'll just talk about that one little bit because it was terrifying. One problem I did have with this book is actually visualising the silo itself. A lot of effort went into describing the silo, but the central staircase itself I found quite hard to imagine. Every time I thought about it, something in the book would change. For example, at one point I thought it was a central staircase with open space around it, but then they talked about how some people commit suicide from a particular level because it's a better jump. So obviously there's not a big open space around it. Then I thought it was encased, but then they talk about looking down upon other levels. So I found it quite hard to visualise, which is why I'm really excited that there's a graphic novel of Wall, which I can't wait to get my hands on, because that will help me, I think, visualise this world. Another problem I had with the book is really more of a pet peeve, but it really grated. So I understand that every author has idiosyncrasies, and every author has a particular writing style. However, this story is told from the point of view of several different characters, and they all have an inner monologue. And the inner monologue doesn't really change, which happens a lot in books. I remember reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I think two of the stories are written from the point of view of Sherlock Holmes, not Dr. Watson. And I was really excited about this until I read it and thought, damn, Sherlock, you sound exactly like Dr. Watson. Like, you, you use the same vocab, you use the same sentence structure. I mean, come on, you're not that similar. But obviously, it's because the writer has a particular style. And it's really hard to weigh up. Do you respect the author's writing style, or do you want to go for something different every time? Because they both have advantages, but they're also both quite hard to attain. The reason I'm pointing this out is because Hugh Howey uses a particular style of writing, which I think is more oratory. It sounds like a speech. There's more listing. For example, at one point he writes, Holston didn't think to wave back, didn't have the energy or the desire. Now, reading that, I want to put a connector in between back and didn't. Holston didn't think to wave back and didn't have the energy. Or because he didn't have the energy. Or simply, he didn't have the energy. And the fact that a preposition has been left out isn't bad, it's just a bit glaring because it feels more like a speech. It's a really, really small matter and it didn't annoy me that much, but the first few times it popped up I was like, what? That doesn't sound quite right. But that style of writing goes throughout the book, regardless of which character is talking. Not necessarily a bad thing, and it doesn't make it a bad book, but that was my one really annoying thing. Otherwise, fantastic book. The plot itself is amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on the sequel. There are, I think, four books in the series. Wool, Shift, Dust, and... someone else. 
But what's very interesting is that the next book isn't a direct sequel. It's from the point of view of the people who made the silo. The people in this book have a history going back about 200 years. They don't know anything about that before then. It's all conjecture. How did these people end up in this silo? So it's really interesting to go back and answer those questions after you've read the book. So now I want to read the prequel sequel because I'm hooked. The other book I read this week was Lord of the Flies by William Golding, which I'm assuming a lot of people read in school. I never read it in school. I think I tried, but I got a bit bored. And I've got to confess, I got a bit bored this time too. The book's about a bunch of school kids who end up on a desert island and have to try and make their own society. And as time goes on, they sort of lose their perspective on what it means to be a civilised person and start hunting animals and dressing up like savages. I'm not going to keep the plot from you because it was written in 1954. I mean, I think everyone knows what it's about. The only reason I know what it's all about is because I watched the episode of The Simpsons' Das Bus a couple of years ago. For example, when I started reading the book, I replaced the names of some of the characters with Milhouse and Bart because I knew that those were the characters in The Simpsons episode. Despite that, I think it's actually a good book. It serves as a very good allegory for rationality versus irrationality. And it serves as a very good story for what would happen in that sort of situation. Do people keep a sense of who they were before? Do they resort to savage, animalistic, mob rule societies? So in theory, it's a great book, but unfortunately I just found it a bit boring. I don't know why, and I feel really bad about it because it's a classic. Like, you shouldn't fall asleep while reading classics. Except people do, and I think it might be because it was written 60 years ago and language has changed since then. It's just just hard to put my finger on why I couldn't read this book so easily. You might disagree, you might have found it really exciting, and I can see why, but for me I just couldn't keep my eyes open. So if you want to talk about The Lord of the Flies, or indeed Walt, or anything else I've talked about, please leave a comment or tweet me. I love getting comments and talking to you guys about this stuff. If you like this video, please subscribe or give a thumbs up. Very briefly, there's a link down below to Bookstack Chronicles, who's released a new web series which I've been contributing to. We just sit around, drink tea, and talk about very interesting and important questions. Questions like, do ghosts use stairs or a lift? It's called The Big Questions. I've got a link down below to the first episode and also to her channel. If it sounds like something you might enjoy, please follow the link. Now for the spoiler bit of wool. So if you've read the book, Juliet leaves the silo and finds another silo, gets inside and finds one other person living there. Great plot twist, could kind of see it coming, but good. So they're at the bottom of the silo, there's a big pool of water, they're trying to do something about it, and they find out that they're not alone. And they've mentioned it a few times, like, ooh, did I leave a light on? I'm not too sure, and everyone gets that feeling. But they're not alone! It's like there's a call coming from inside the house situation. It terrified me. I was reading it at half past midnight, my wife was asleep, it was dark, I got terrified. And in terms of a plot twist, oh my god, I was terrified. If you had a similar feeling reading that book, please tell me, because I've got to talk to someone about this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.